Hello and welcome back to my awesome Linux tool series, the series where I show you guys an awesome tool or utility that I think is going to make a difference for you as a Linux administrator or Linux enthusiast. In today's video, we're going to go over the ncdu command, the ncurses disk usage tool. And what this tool enables you to do is find out where all that hard drive space is going. I mean, no matter how big our hard drives get, for some reason or another, we just keep losing space. Files get larger and more plentiful. And if you manage a file server, then you especially know how tedious that can be when you have a bunch of people saving files in one server. But the ncdu command is definitely one that I recommend that everyone installs. And in today's video, we're going to go through the ncdu command in all its glory. So let's get started. But first, we do need to make sure that ncdu is installed. And most of the time, well, it's not. Most distributions don't even include ncdu by default. But it is one of those packages that I always make sure is installed because it's just so useful. So let's see if I have it installed. And I know I do because, like I said, I always make sure that ncdu is installed. But in case it's not installed on your system, then what I recommend you do is go ahead and install it. Basically, you just use your package manager and install the ncdu package. So in Debian and Ubuntu, it's going to look something like this. Obviously, I don't need to run this because I already have it, but if you don't already have it on your end and you're running on Debian, Ubuntu, or a distribution based on one of those, then this command will go ahead and install ncdu on your system. Once it's installed, how do you use it? Well, actually, it's very, very simple. You type ncdu, and then you type the path where you want the scan to start from. So for example, if you want to search the entire file system, then you include a single forward slash just like that. Now, it's going to take quite a while in my case because, as you can see here, it's actually scanning my TrueNAS server because on my Thelio, I actually have that mounted. So I'm going to break out of this. And the reason for that is I would prefer it to not search my entire file server. In this case, I'm logged into my desktop, so I'm actually only concerned with the files that are on this particular machine, not anything that's mounted that's an external resource like my TrueNAS server. So how do I fix that? Well, that's actually easy because all you do is you add dash x as an option. And what dash x will do is tell ncdu to not scan anything that's mounted, only worry about the local resources on the particular system that you're logged into. So let's see how the command differs now. So as you can see, it's going through all of my files right here. And now what we see here is a list of folders that are in the root file system on my desktop, sorted by size. And as you can see, my home directory is quite large, so that's going to be at the very top, and then it's going to order the rest of the directories from highest down to lowest. Now, one of the things that's really cool about this is that you can actually select a folder. So for example, if I press Enter on Home, obviously my user is going to be the one that's going to be the largest. I'll just press Enter on that. And as you can see here, my Steam directory is going to be one of the larger files because that's where all my games are downloaded. I have 299 gigabytes of games, as you can see here. And I'm kind of curious which game is taking up the most storage. Let's find out. So I'll just navigate through the folders here. And as you can see here, Doom Eternal clocks in at 79 gigabytes, So that's easily the biggest game that I have installed at this time. Now, what I'm going to do is press Q to quit out of ncdu and go back to the command line. And I want to start over because there is a very important aside that I want to make sure you guys are aware of. And it might actually go without saying, but I just want to make sure you guys are aware of this. The ncdu command only has access to scan directories that the user has access to. So this is the example that I ran right here. I didn't use sudo. I'm logged in as myself currently. So ncdu might not be showing me accurate information. I mean, I don't doubt for a minute that my home directory is going to be the largest of any of the directories here, but it's not going to search through any of the directories that root owns or is owned by another user. So for that, we might want to consider using sudo. The trade-off though, is that if we do use sudo, then we have full access to everything, which is great. However, ncdu also facilitates the deletion of files and folders as well. 
So when we run it with sudo, we definitely want to be very careful. So I'll run it again. And we're going to see the same results for the most part because I am the primary user on this system. But imagine if this was a server, for example, that had multiple users that logged in. Then if you ran ncdu without sudo, then your results might be especially skewed. But anyway, let's move on. So I'm going to go into the var directory and then log. And then as you can see here, we have several different files. Now what I want to do is delete this file right here. I don't need this old xorg log anymore. And it's only 916 kibibytes, but let's just assume that this is a ginormous file and we need to get rid of it because we are running out of disk space. So how exactly do we do that? Well, what we could do is press D for delete and then it'll ask you if you're sure that you do indeed want to delete the particular item that you've highlighted. So I'll go over to yes and I'll press enter. And that's very useful because you can use ncdu to not only see which folders on your system are the biggest when it comes to file sizes, you can also delete things as well. And that's really great because if you are running this on a server, especially a file server, then you're probably going to want to use ncdu every now and then and keep an eye on the storage. So next, I'm going to quit out of ncdu yet again. And let's just see which file systems I have mounted on this desktop. So as you can see, I have a few here. I have a video cache directory that I use for editing. That's what my editor uses for all of the optimized media, proxy media, and things like that. So that's going to be a decent size at 199 gigabytes. And of course we have the root file system, but what if I just want to scan this particular mount right here? Well, that's easy because we're using this variation of NCDU right here where we're scanning the entire root file system, but you don't have to start from the root file system you can actually give it a directory to start from. And what I'm going to do is remove the dash X because this is actually a mounted device. It's actually a PCIe storage device. Anyway, I'll press enter. And right here, we can see some information about the cache. And these files are probably not going to make all that much sense because these are created by the video editor. And we have a what looks like a random or hashed name right here. So we're not going to know which is which. But anyway, the point is, you could start from any directory, even a mounted directory. And in that case, you might not even need to use sudo because, well, I probably didn't need to use sudo. I am the owner of this particular mount. So if I was to go ahead and remove sudo from this command right here, it shouldn't change anything at all. As you can see, I get the same results. Now, the most important tip that I'll give you guys regarding NCDU is to make sure that it's installed. Now, I know that seems like a very obvious thing, but think about it like this. You definitely don't want to wait until your storage is full because in that case, well, you can't install NCDU because you have no space to install it in. So definitely make sure that NCDU is among the packages that you install by default on your Linux servers because it might just come in handy. Like I mentioned earlier, NCDU is one of those tools that I like to make sure is installed in every single Linux installation within my jurisdiction. It's that useful. And also, make sure that you have it installed before storage becomes a problem, because you certainly can install it after if your disk is completely full. Now, of course, I hope you never need NCDU because you have so much storage that you'll never run out, or you're just that good at managing storage. But sometimes all it takes is that one user that saves a ginormous file somewhere they're not supposed to, and then you have to go in and find out what they did. And NCDU is just a great way to do that. So hopefully this video helped you out. And if it did, please click that like button. That lets YouTube know that people need to see more Linux content just like this. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.